Hello friends, as you know these days we are discussing about uh, lab based experiments or field based experiments to monitor uh, different uh, air pollutants. So, today we will discuss about stack emission monitoring using isokinetic sampling. So, what are the emissions from the stack if you want to measure like particulate matter or gaseous components. So, how do we measure these uh, emissions that is very important, stack monitoring is very important. So, in this particular presentation uh, we will first discuss about what is the need, why, why it is so important, then the principle of uh, the sampling method for stack monitoring, what are the apparatus or equipment which are used for the sampling in stack monitoring and uh, what is the procedure, then how do we recover the sample so that we can analyze in the lab then how do we estimate the concentrations, what are the procedures of the calculation and uh, you know the particulate matter as well as gaseous pollutants can be measured. So, uh, first we will discuss about particulate uh, pollution uh, monitoring method and then briefly we will also touch about gaseous pollutants like sulphur dioxide, we have given one example otherwise NOx emissions can also be uh, monitored and uh, explained. Then after quality control related uh, brief uh, you know uh, discussion, uh, we will uh, show you the video which will further explain how uh, this uh, sampling is done at the stack uh, emissions and we will conclude. So, as you know these stacks which are quite uh, you know large size chimneys where pollutions are uh, coming as a kind of point source emissions you can say. So, they are important in the sense because earlier they were used for uh, giving the pressure uh, difference in the draft velocity otherwise later on it was found that stacks also help in dispersion of the pollutant. So, you can say indirectly it also helps in dilution of the pollutants and reducing the concentration at the ground level right. So, we should know how much emission is coming out of it because if there are so many stacks and emissions are multiplying then maybe even if they are diluting ultimately the ground level concentration may exceed the standards which are prescribed by CPCB or MOEF Ministry of Environment and Forest and Climate Change. Okay. So, we need to monitor the emissions from the stacks that is the important thing and the particulate matter or the gases components their properties like uh, uh, you know velocity, temperature, humidity and the concentration of particular pollutants whether it is particulate matter or gases components we can measure and the importance is because you know the pollution if we do not measure and we do not compare then we cannot judge how much pollution is coming from those stacks. So, stack monitoring is very important thing. Now, if we talk about uh, like uh, the principle of sampling method for particulate matter uh, monitoring, uh, then this is basically uh, you know the isokinetic sampling method which is given lot of emphasis. Because in this we have to ensure that the velocity, temperature and other parameters are the same as it is in the stack means the nozzle which we will be using for extracting the sample. So, the velocity and the flow rate etcetera all these kinetic parameters must be the same which goes into the probe or the nozzle which is in the entire stack. So, that is the isokinetic uh, uh, fundamental thing which we should ensure. If we look into the apparatus or equipment which is used for this uh, stack emission monitoring, then basically uh, it is like panel box uh, on front side you can see the pressure, the measurement of the pressure difference and the flow rate etcetera. On the back side we have out and uh, inlet or those where we will uh, put those props you can say and then these pilot tubes which are used for guiding the props etcetera, thermocouples are also there then impinger tubes are needed for gaseous components basically, so that we can have the knowledge about how much uh, NOx or SOx are there. Then vacuum pump is there for extraction, this is the sampling probe which is inserted in the uh, you know the stack basically. So, you can see there are other parts like uh, filter paper or thimble which is known then the thimble holder, nozzle is also there then heated uh, filler box, stop watch is there and other uh, you know parts of this equipment which are shown in CPCB manual basically you can go through that to learn more. Then there are important aspects like location of sampling ok, the sample which is collected. So, that sample uh, for particulate concentration uh, shall be done where velocity measurement were carried out basically ok, 
that that particular uh, point is very important. The nozzle size is selected uh, you know so that we can provide a, uh, this meter sampling rate between 40 to 60 liter per minute. So, that kind of nozzle size must be there. Calculation of proper sampling rate is also very important which is done uh, with the help of like gas meter for each sampling point before starting the test. So, this is the calculation uh, procedure for uh, sampling rate basically where there, there are different parameters like flow rate, then the sampling rate, absolute uh, gas temperature, absolute temperature of the metering conditions, then barometer pressure, all these parameters are noted and we use those parameters here in this particular equation to calculate the sampling rate. And if we talk about the sampling procedure basically, so the two streams are there. One is like uh, giving the thermo this uh, temperature related velocity related uh, values, other one is uh, giving us uh, you know where this uh, particulate matter will be collected. So, the two streams you can look into uh, in this procedure. So, the sample is recovered uh, when uh, you know uh, we have done the sampling. So, we need to collect that uh, filter paper basically and uh, we have to make uh, sure that there is no addition of the particulate matter from outside. So, we need to keep it in a proper way and then the mass of the dust collected uh, on this uh, filter paper or thimble uh, is to be weighed basically and uh, it should be kept in uh, oven about 2 hours at uh, 120 degree Celsius to remove any kind of error which could be because of some moisture etcetera. So, the before and after the sampling the way is uh, taken and then the difference as you know in uh, this uh, high volume sampler case we have already seen how the difference of these two values gives us the concentration. Well, so when we calculate the volume of the gas which has been sampled basically, so we need uh, this particular uh, relationship where pressure difference is there, volume of the gas sampled at dry gas meter conditions and the temperature etcetera. So, that uh, correction can be applied according to their unit and then this gives the value of gas sample basically. This value is used for uh, you know like to uh, divide uh, this uh, weight difference and it will give the concentration ok. Concentration means weight divided by the volume flow rate. So, this uh, equation can be used for that purpose. Then if you want to uh, you know uh, calculate the dust emission rate, then we have to multiply it with the flow rate Q s ok. So, that can give the emission rate. So, we know the concentration as well as the emission rate. And if you want to use this particular device for uh, uh, you know monitoring the gaseous pollutant that is also possible uh, by using some impingers ok. So, for SO2 or NOx, so for SO2 we have given some information. So, that gas sampling is uh, done through extraction from the sampling point where we are using the probe in the stack basically. So, the, the in this case of SO2 sulfuric acid mist including the sulfur trioxide and the sulfur dioxide are separated. So, that there is no error the SO2 fraction is measured by the barium uh, thorin titration method. And there are reagents which are uh, uh, you know used for this particular purpose and deionized distilled uh, you know water then uh, isopropanol then hydrogen peroxide 3 percent all these uh, stuff is being used for that uh, calculation and sampling method. Then the procedure is shown in this particular figure a schematic diagram you can see here. So, the sample is collected and then sample is recovered and then it is analyzed in the laboratory. So, here you uh, collect the sample it goes through these uh, impingers and it is absorbed and then it is taken to the lab. Calculation is done in this case also as we have done particulate matter. So, this is the uh, you know these are the uh, temperature then the volume and the and this uh, calibration factor, pressure related uh, fact factor all these you know parameters are to be used for gas volume calculation right. Then the concentration, uh, so concentration is to be calculated by this particular relationship where volume of barium standard uh, titrant used for the sample is used and uh, similarly for the blank is used so that difference can be noted and other uh, you know the like dry volume, volume of the sample. Uh, these uh, kind of values are to be used for this particular relationship. Also the quality control is important as we have seen in each experiment we have to follow the strict uh, guidelines or uh, those mandatory procedure or protocol. So, that quality is ensured otherwise uh, the monitoring uh, values can be different calculation may also be different than what is the real one. 
So, now we uh, present uh, a short video which will give you better perspective about how the sampling of gaseous components or particulate matter is to be done using the isokinetic sampling method. Okay? And this video has been uh, you know recorded in air pollution laboratory of civil engineering department IIT Roorkee. So, enjoy the video please. Good morning friends, I welcome you in another experiment of our subject air pollution and control. And in today's experiment, I am going to explain you the method of sampling uh, of uh, emissions which are coming out from the stacks and that is called as the stack monitoring. And for that we use the stack monitor and the stack monitoring is generally used when uh, we are uh, going into the uh, power plants or industries and the emissions which are coming out from the, uh, uh, from the height of the uh, different height of the stacks. So, from those stacks through which the emissions are coming out, we measure the how much of the particulate matter and copolitant gases are there which are coming out from the emissions of these stacks. Okay. So, this is the experimental setup that we use for measurement of emissions from the stacks. Okay. And uh, first of all, I will explain you the different component of uh, this device. So, basically like we have seen in our previous experiments also like we have to suck the ambient air to measure the uh, voltants or particulate matter inside it. So, here also we need to have a suction device. So, here you can see this is the stack monitor and to suck the ambient air we have a here a, a vacuum pump which is connected through this hose and, uh, and it is attached at this point. So, when we start this vacuum pump it sucks the air through this instrument. Okay. So, this is the suction pump part and uh, um, this stack monitor is having the different components. So, the first of all I will tell you. Um, this is the thermocouple sampler and uh, this long rod is there. So, the purpose of, it, of this rod is like when we are going to uh, measure the temperature inside the uh, stack, we have to insert this uh, prop into the stack through the sampling port. Okay. And this prop or thermocouple is connected through this pipe at this point. Okay. So, he, uh, this is the thermocouple for measurement of temperature inside the stack as well as ambient air. The another component of this instrument is your pitot tube. This is called as S type of pitot tube and the purpose of this pitot tube is to uh, measure the velocity. Okay. And uh, the fundamental principle or the physics which are used in this uh, sampling is called as isokinetic sampling. What is the isokinetic? Basically like when we are sampling the emissions through the stack, whatever the velocity of the emissions which are coming from the stack or coming out from the stack, the same velocity should be maintained when we are sampling the, uh, the sample through this probe of the pitot tube. Okay. If the velocity is different then it will not be isokinetic sampling. So, in order to maintain uh, the constant velocity or the isokinetic sampling so that like velocity which are coming out from the stack and the which is passing through this of the gas should have a constant value or it is the same value. So, we have this uh, rotameter here through which we can regulate. So, this is your pitot tube for measurement uh, of uh, uh, the velocity of the stake emission okay. and it has a long prop. So, we just insert it through the port wherever we are doing the sampling in the stake okay. and it has a two pipes here and which are connected here in the stack sampler. So, what is the purpose of these two pipe? When we are keeping this uh, pitot tube like this, then uh, if, if this is from bottom to up it is uh, the gas which is coming out, then it has a two probe. So, there will be a, some difference in the pressure like coming the uh, velocity of uh, the gas which is coming up, he, here it will be higher and here it will be lower. So, the difference of these two will be here and the fundam using this fundamental equation of the pitot tube will be able to measure the velocity because by using the pressure drop. So, this is the purpose of the pitot tube to measure the velocity to the. So, until now I have tell you the temperature through the uh, temperature probe or thermocouple using which we can measure the temperature inside the stack as well as outside. Okay. And through the pitot tube we are able to measure the velocity of the stake uh, emissions. Okay. So, now as I said like we need to maintain the uh, isokinetic sampling. Okay. Now, how do we do this? And uh, uh, in order to do this like uh, we have to have a um, rotameters. 
So here you can see in this uh, device we have a rotameter, two rotameter, one is corresponding to the SPM and one is corresponding to gas. The purpose of saying this for SPM like when we are doing the sampling for SPM or suspended particulate matter, then we maintain the flow rate through this and when we are measuring uh, the gases only, then we control the flow rate through this. Now how, what is the purpose of controlling? The purpose of controlling is like when we are measuring uh, the velocity through the uh, pitot tube. We, we can use the formula and estimate the uh, velocity and then we can calculate the flow rate. Now that flow rate if we are able to control through the suction pump and through regulating here then by regulating that flow rate we will be able to maintain a constant velocity and therefore uh, this will ensure the isokinetic condition of sampling right. And uh, so this is the purpose of these uh, two uh, rotameters and here we have another opening and the purpose of this opening is like when we are doing. Uh, for the sampling of uh, particles along with gas, then we use this probe. It actually, this probe is having at the front a filter assembly through which uh, when the uh, stake emissions is coming and it is passing through the filter. So, whatever the dust particle or suspended particles that will be collected inside the filter and only gas will be allowed to pass. So, this probe is used when we are uh, doing uh, sampling of uh, SPM also. And this probe is will be connected at this point, right. So, for measurement of uh, stake temperature, we use the prop and when, and, uh, when we also use this switch. So, when this switch is on for the stake temperature, the temperature of stake will be recorded and when we are using this switch to, uh, uh, to switch up so that the ambient temperature will be recorded from here. So, this is how using this switch we can measure the stack temperature as well as the ambient temperature. So, on this basis uh, we can calculate all those uh, you know parameters whether uh, particulate matter or SO2 you know the procedure uh, sampling as well as calculation. So, in conclusion we can say that uh, these kind of methodologies or instruments can be used for measurement of gaseous and particulate pollution which is emitting out of a particular stack and those values are very much required because there are norms how much pollution emission standards are there which has to be met. So, we can compare with the help of those particular monitoring data. Those monitoring data are also used for dispersion modeling purpose, health risk assessment uh, etcetera. So, stack monitoring is very important activity and uh, environmental engineers are uh, you know uh, they should know the methodology how to do stack monitoring. Uh, so, this is the explanation about the stack sampling, stack uh, emission sampling and the calculation. I hope you have enjoyed this. So, thank you for your kind attention and these are the references where we have taken matter and uh, thanks again and uh, see you in the next lecture.